Brawl, news about the war. On the front lines, our homegrown heroes are holding toe-to-toe -to -toe against the pungent Petrodians. But back in the barracks, folks from home and away are signing up to do their part. You might even find the odd Petrodian joining our ranks to fight against their own. Go get them, soldier. And get them once for me. Talk to your local Godshed operator about how you can join the Sprawl Army today. Join the Sprawl Army today. Any questions? Did you see my dad? He was there. He looked okay. No, I meant questions about the new drafting procedure. It was in the weekly update video. You mean the propaganda video? You know what propaganda is? I didn't until I watched that video. Listen, people are going to come up asking about joining the army. It's your job to decide if they're a good fit, especially considering who else is coming to enlist that day. I thought my job was to decide who to let pass the gate. That's also your job. This is wartime. You have to do two things now. I wish my dad was here. He'd show me how to get out of doing two things. Up until now, we've tolerated a two-star average with you guardsmen. Not anymore. We are dancing on a knife's edge here, so now you have to maintain a 2.5-star average, or it's game over. Oh, and if you don't draft the right people, we could lose the war. Also game over. Wait, figuratively or literally? Both. Oh my god. Well, I'm gonna go. You're just gonna leave after dropping something that heavy on me? Fine, I'll stay. We can tutorial some more. Actually, I'm starting to see the appeal of your first plan. I thought you might. Goodbye, Lil. Excuse me, ma'am. Is this the place where a fella could sign up to join that war that's going on? It is. Why? Do you know someone who's looking to sign up? Sure do, ma'am. His name is Elmer John, and you're looking at him. I'm talking about me, ma'am. Yeah, I got that. Now, what's a guy like you doing wanting to fight in a war like this? I fight for one thing and one thing only. My one and only love, Glory Ann. That's very heroic, I guess. This Glory Ann, is she your sweetheart? She sure is. And does Glory Ann feel the same way about you? She sure does. At least, I thought she did. That's my Glory Ann. Oh, how you've done me wrong, Glory Ann. She gave me this picture. I forgot I still had it on me. Nice photo. And the frame's quite nice, too. The picture looks bumpy, like someone wrote something on the back of it. What does it say? I don't know. It's too precious to me to take out of the frame. Regardless, reading time is over. I've made up my mind. I'm going to war. Let 
me see that picture, Elmer. Okay, but don't break the frame. My dearest Elmer John, if you ever see me in the arms of another man, please know that it's probably just a misunderstanding and don't go running off to war alone. If you must, make sure you've got someone big and strong from town there with you. Yours forever, Glory Ann. That's oddly specific. So it's all just a misunderstanding? Then maybe I shouldn't rush off to war without talking to her first. Or I should, but under very specific conditions. I don't think I can, in good conscience, send you to the front, Elmer. Go home, find Glorianne, and talk to her. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I was making one of those, what do you call it, hasty decisions I always make. I'll go home and see my Glory Ann, who I caught in the arms of another man, and I'll make the biggest apology banner anybody ever saw. What's an apology banner? It's the easiest way to say you're sorry. So long, ma'am. You take care now. Glory Ann, I'm a coming. Ah, it's you again. I remember you, the miserable wretch who sought me the last time I came to this repulsive, simmering carbuncle of a city. I remember you too. You're that unpleasant, obnoxious Ebenezer Scrooge knockoff. Yes, we have met. It is my intention to go straight to the bank of the sprawl and have my substantial monies removed from this sinking barge of a city before the banks are overrun, or worse, sacked. Mr. Dunn just needs to hear my confirmation number and I will have my fortune sheltered in a more rich people friendly nation. What will happen to the BS without you? Most likely, BS will fall in one great lump. Perhaps enough people will continue to buy into BS, but as far as I'm concerned, the people here were up to their necks in BS anyway. We're still talking about the bank, right? This is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great? Just read the cards! Oh, okay. <clears throat> this is the dungeon of Malcolm the Great! May I take a message? Wait, who is this? Who is this? Lil. Oh, Lil! It's me, Will! I thought so. Listen, there's someone here I think would like to speak with you. Go ahead. Well, is it really you? It is, Your Grace. Well, I never thought I'd see you again. Well, we are on the phone. How are you? Have you been treated poorly? No one ever treated me as poorly as you, sir. I miss you, well... I miss you too, sir. Come, run away with me. We can leave this war behind us and start again with all of my money. Sir, I never cared a jot for your money. I only wanted to be with you. Oh, Wilp, my heart sings. No matter what happens to me now, I will dedicate my remaining life to you. What about your remaining money? I'll donate it to the poor. <laughs> Just kidding, but I won't take it away with me today. Good enough. Get in there and reunite with your friend. Where 
is he? Where's that meek little slunk of a man? I have no idea what you're talking about. Did a hopelessly heartbroken fella by the name of Elmer John come by this way? Spouting a crazy notion like running off and joining the army? As a matter of fact, he did. Oh, Elmer John, what have you done? Tell me, did you allow that fool to throw his life away over nothing? I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you or not. I have to know if you sent him off to war, because if you didn't send him, then I'd like you to send me to get as far away from that fool as possible. I take it you're Glory Ann. That's me, Glory Ann. The same Glory Ann that was caught in the arms of another man? It's not what it looked like. And if Elmer John had stuck around for more than a second, I could have explained that to him. And you're sick of these lunk-headed men getting all hot and bothered and making hasty decisions over something that could have been settled by a rational conversation? Exactly! It all started when that big loud Bosco from Two Houses Over came round like he always does to try to court me again. I explained to him that Elmer John had asked for my hand and that I had said yes. And then Bosco explodes and says he's gonna smash Elmer's head like a jug. So I lunged at Bosco to hold him back. The big brute! That's what Elmer saw. And the next thing I know, he's crying about going off to war. Now, I'm not doing this because I drafted Elmer John and I'm trying to keep you apart. I understand. And I'm not doing this because I didn't draft him and I want you two to be together. Understood. I'm doing this because I don't think you fully thought this through. I'm denying your recruitment into the army. I guess I was acting a little hot under the collar there for a minute. I should go home and talk things over with Elmer and... Wait, now will you tell me? What happened to him? Did he get drafted into the war? I didn't send him to the front. I think you'll find he'll be waiting for you when you get home. Big ol' apology banner and all. Thank goodness! Oh, hello, Lil! Isn't it an absolutely beautiful day? Sun's shining, birds chirping. Why, a gobbo could almost sing about it. Nice to see you again. You do. I'm just coming from a conference of GLA members from different nations looking to help each other out. The GLA sounds like it's thriving. It sure is! We made some major inroads with a sympathetic group of Petrardian miners. They've offered to dig tunnels that will bring food to the sprawl without anyone knowing. I hope we can get these plans to Queen Desdemona for her stamp of approval. Then we can get things underway. You should take these to the Queen. I'm on my way there now. Those tunnel plans to increase our food supplies are exactly the kind of outside-the-box thinking we need. Let them in. The city's best and brightest will go over the map and construction will begin in no time. We have food! We have food! <laughs> uh, well done, Garthman. Lil, 
It is always a pleasure. Julian, I hope you have a fantastic day. Do you really mean that? I sincerely do. Keep up the great work, friend. Thanks, Lil. You're one of the good ones. Hey, Lil. Listen, I wanted to say I know things must be tough for you with Hamish out on the front lines and... Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it, Cecil. I'm doing all right. That's good to hear. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I'm actually not sure I do know where to find you. Oh, well, normally it would be at the barracks, but for the foreseeable future, I'll be running security for Her Majesty Princess... Sorry, Queen Desdemona. After you finished your shift, Her Majesty and the Royal Consort have asked to see you. Why does Her Majesty want to see me? She's meeting with some high-ranking member of the Mage's Guild to discuss battle strategy. To be honest, the Guild hasn't been very supportive of how Her Majesty has handled things. She was looking for a bit of backup and wanted you specifically. Well, she can count on me. I hope. I hope so, too. The fate of the sprawl may rest in your hands. It always does, Cecil. I'll see you after my shift. Great, great. Thanks, Lil. And if you write your dad, tell him we all wish him well. I will. I know he'd love to hear it. See you later, Cecil. We have been left without shelter. It's awful. Scarborough has fallen. <laughs> the Duchy of Scarborough has been under constant siege for the majority of the war. Those bastards! Quite. We finally had to flee. We couldn't stand it any longer. We've been without food for days. Yes, everyone is rather hungry. I'm so sorry to hear that you've had to flee your home. I can't imagine how hard that must have been. Thank you, child. I'm a duchess without a duchy. We have rather a lot of refugees that need your help and your food desperately. This? Oh, it's just a letter. From me aunt. Mind if I read that? Let's see. La la la, late at night while no one is awake. Blah blah blah, lower the drawbridge and we will invade. Ba ba ba. Hmm. Long live Prince Phineas? Care to explain? Alright, alright, I did it. I lowered the bridge and let those... Bastards? Right, those bastards. I let them in. It was me. <laughs> oh, you sneak. You are hereby banished from the court of Scarborough. Prince Phineas was right. Soon the entire sprawl will fall to the might of the kingdom of Petrard. Oh, go away. Well spotted, Guardian. Listen, I'm just doing my job. And that's how you x-ray your way to success! Excellent line, m'lady. But that 
was... Oh, never mind. Even with that settled, I'm still not sure what to do with these people. Oh, my heart just breaks for the dear Duchess and the people of Scarborough. While our food supplies remain dangerously low, with the tunnel operation unlocked thanks to you, we should just be able to feed everyone, including these refugees. You may let them in. Bless you, dear child! Yes, thanks awfully. As I said, we are incredibly hungry. There should be enough food for your people. We have a new plan to bring more into the sprawl. Regardless, you are a hero in the history of Scarborough. If our lands are ever restored to us... <laughs> Where do I enlist? You're there. Here. Then what are you waiting for? Sign me up already. The name is Bosco. I heard that lily-livered run Elmer John came by this way, and I want to catch up with him so I can smash his head like a jug. You're just the kind of guy we're looking for, but I'll need more than just a first name to sign you up. Hulahan. Okay, Bosco Hulahan. And last thing, why do you want to smash Elmer's head like a jug? Because he's a fool. I trust it's common practice to go around smashing people's heads like jugs where you're from? Only if they're dumb enough to run away from a quality dame like Glorianne. Picture of me. Nice photo. But the frame's awful. I hate it. Then why carry it around? I was going to give it to Glorianne, but she said no. Do you want it? No. Okay. The picture looks bumpy, like someone wrote something on the back of it. What does it say? Ah, oh, nothing. I don't remember. Let me see that picture of you. Okay. Watch out. The frame is broken. In war, lonely Elmer is a bust. Win Glory Ann or Bosco alone. Just the guys would do it too. What the heck does that mean? Looks like somebody tried to write an emotional poem on the back of that picture of me. They're definitely not trying to hint at anything or anything. What a loser, whoever they are. Listen, Buster, we need you. My name is Bosco. I know. But... Listen, Bosco, we need you. Okay, good. Look out, Elmer John. I'm coming to smash her head like a jug. Yeah, go get him. If he's there. Honestly, I forget what I did with him.
Which is exactly why we must start using them immediately. The risk is too great. We need more time to study the long-term repercussions. A luxury we can ill afford. Your Majesty, Lil has arrived. Thank you, Cecil. Lil, thank goodness you're here. I've got a problem. You have an opportunity, Your Highness. You know Tyronius of Thanatos, I believe. I've had the pleasure, I guess. Yes, I remember this little guardsman. And Dr. B. Have you met Dr. Beatrix von Matterhorn Lil? I have. She works at the hole in the ground by the edge of town. Yes, I, I mean, it's an archaeological dig site, but yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, she's the one who gave me the chronometer 3000 on my first day. Ah, so she does have access to power crystal technology. I might have known. Wait, Lil has had access to power crystal technology this whole time? Maybe it's not as dangerous as we imagined. She seems fine. We don't know that. It's still too early. How long can we wait? How many brave soldiers of the Sprawl must give their lives before we use the tools we have available? Let me fill you in on what's going on here. The Mages Guild feels that if they had access to power crystals, they could hold back the enemy and maybe even win the war outright. Okay, so why don't they go buy some? I know a guy in an alley. You know what? I'm gonna stop there. It's starting to sound weird. They want all the crystals, access to every dig site and existing stockpile in order to amplify their power. The good doctor could simply give us the blueprints, or better yet, the working model the child has in her possession. This would allow our research to flourish in no time. Dr. Beatrix feels that there are too many unknown variables to use it safely on a larger scale. The Mage's Guild is and always has been reckless. There's no way I'm handing my research over to you. Not until I see the full effects on my human test guinea pig here. Yeah. Wait, what? We both knew what this was. Well, Lil, you've been using power crystals at the guard shed. What do you think? Are they too dangerous? They are way too dangerous. I use the Chronometer 3000 under very specific circumstances. You start manipulating time out there in the everyday world, who knows where it could lead? Spoken like a scientist, do you have a master's degree? How many times do I have to tell you people? I'm 12. Thank you for your counsel. I always appreciate having multiple opinions when it comes to big decisions. I have made up my mind. Dr. B will continue to oversee Lil's progress with the Chronometer 3000, and it will stay out of the hands of the Mages Guild until we can be certain that it is safe to use in this war. Then at least allow the Guild access to the Crystal Reserve for the sake of the Sprawl's future. For the time being, the Reserve shall remain under my control. For the time being. My decision is final, Tyronius. You will find that I am not as easily swayed by you as my father was. Thanks for your insight, Lil. I'm sorry to keep putting you in this position. I'm just here to support my lady love. This choice has been eating her up inside. It's an important decision and I want to do anything I can to help. I think she made a good choice. With you, I mean. Why the princess listens to you, I will never understand. It's like you're the only two people in the dead mum's club. My mother's terrible. That should count for something. Hopefully your words will not sway Desdemona on future matters. I'm glad calmer heads prevailed. At least for now.
Hey, you spoke well today, Lil. One more message for you today. I was instructed to tell you to head over to Malcolm's to meet the advisors. Good luck. What I don't understand is why would they have summoned her to a meeting without us there? Where's the fun in that? Without at least one of us there. And we all know it should have been me. You really believe that, don't you? When it comes down to the serious, important things that affect this kingdom, I think they'd rather take advice from the strategic mind of a ranking military officer. Rather than the two cents of a goofy, hopped-up lunatic with questionable taste in fashion. Or a lousy court jester. Yeah, ouch! We were both in the firing line on that one. Well, all that being said, you still weren't asked to join said quorum, but she was. And she is here. What? She is here. She's here. She's here. Lil is here. I really have to work on my subtlety. Ah, Lil. You're here. We heard you got summoned to talk to the Queen and her new choice of partner for some kind of special quorum. How was it? Was it boring? What kind of boring things did they talk about while you were there? Tell us. If they wanted you to know what they talked about at the meeting, they would have invited you. She won't tell us anything. She's as useless as you two are. I take offense to that. Offense to what? Sorry, I got distracted. Can I go now? You're dismissed. Lil, how goes the Battle of the Southern Gate? Same old. How are things around here holding up? Great. Business is better than ever. Something about war and the idea of impending doom really gets people out to the bar. That's good? You bet it is. If this keeps up, we'll finally be able to get this place up to code. Then we can get rid of the rats. We don't have rats! I mean, we do, but technically they have us. Turns out they own the building and we just rent from them. But if we make enough money, we can buy out from under them. As far as landlords go, they aren't the worst. I could do without all the hissing. Hey, that reminds me. Lil, you got a letter in the mail. How did that rem- Never mind. A letter? From who? From Hamish. A letter from Dad? Gimme! Hey, Sweet Pea. How's everything back home? I'm doing okay here. I've gotten to know a lot of the guys. Then when they don't come back from battle, I get the chance to get to know a few more. I miss you. I know you might be scared right now, but don't be. It'll take tougher stuff than this little war to do in your old dad. Please let me know that you're all right. Or even if you're not. I need to hear how you're doing. I love you, Lil. Dad. Love you too, Dad. But what should I write back to him? If I tell him things are tough here, he might worry and get distracted in battle. But if I tell him I'm doing well, he might feel like I don't need him and then get distracted in battle. He's easily distracted. Oh boy, neither answer seems right. 
Are you talking to me? No. There, that should do it. Hey, Arda, mind making sure this gets to where it needs to go? Sure thing, Lil. Well, if it isn't my old pal, Lil. Oh, so now you remember me. Always did, kiddo. Just had to play it cool while at my legitimate place of business. My former legitimate place of business, that is. Oh no, what happened? Tough to say, kid. Could have been any number of things. Change in management, downsizing on account of the war. It was probably the illegal gambling operation you were running out of the concession stand. Tough to say, kid. Regardless, I'm here on official bookie business. I've come to collect a debt from Hamish. Uh, sounds about right. How much does he owe you? Thirty gold, and I've got the marker to prove it. Hey, I earned that. And so did I. Pleasure doing business with you, kiddo. But hey, I'm not all bad. I hate to take a young kid's pocket money so heartlessly. Doesn't seem that way. Hate to take it without giving them a chance to win it back, that is. Fredo, no gambling. No gambling. No gambling, Fredo. No gambling, just talking. Listen, the Sprawl Brawlers are playing out of town today, and they got the game on that there TV. Tell you what I'll do. You pick who wins, and I'll give you your 30 gold back. If you don't, I keep it. How does that sound to you? That sounds like gambling. No gambling. I ain't hearing a no here. Which team do you want to hear about? Now this team is really something. The owner fired all the players and hired his extended family to play for the team. I'm talking cousins in the outfield, aunties on the pitch, and even his great-great-uncle is playing the four-stop swing. Never seen a team bicker so much, but when someone insults their mother, they're on. You betting on them? All right, kid, your bet is in. Good luck. I bet Brawlers fans are sure wishing their star players weren't cannon fodder for an enemy army right about now. Great Uncle Zack, the Falcon's elderly but unstoppable full stop swing, was just lifted up by his formidable nephews, Kron and Lorik, breezing past the Brawlers' warded circle. Despite a nice attempt to unseat the Wiggly Pig, Sprawl's third whacker, Korab, ended up with a face full of mud. Truly grim stuff for the Brawlers. We're down to the final seconds here, folks. The Falcon's first flanksman, Fiona, has taken out her slingshot. She's pulling it back, and she's beamed the glistening gargoyle, and the Fosca Falcons win! Congratulations to the Fosca family on another bloody successful family reunion. Lucky guess, kid. See you around. Shh, Lil! I'm being discreet. Isla bet me five gold that I couldn't steal a bottle of fizzy when Arda's distracted. How are you planning to do that? I figure if I wait long enough, one of the rats will bite her and she'll freak out and maybe run around a bit. Solid plan. Welcome to Garby's Emporium of Wonder. Lil, about time you showed up. I've had every mage in town come by the shop today trying to buy up all the power crystals. Really? You mean you don't have any left? 
I wouldn't have if I didn't hide a few away from my best customer. I'm your only customer. You were my only customer, but now that I cornered the mage market, I don't know if I'll be able to keep these crystals in stock. Well, the good ones anyway. The mages didn't seem to have too much interest in the cheapo ones. Hey, by the way, before you get to shopping, this blowtorch you sold me with Fosse carved onto it? I've had the hardest time selling it. Maybe you'll want it back. Might come in handy. And I'll sell it to you for just four gold. I think I've done everything I need to do, but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay?